It is the smooth step indicator, ladies and gentlemen. And this video will answer the question. Is this indicator a thriller or is it bad? I ran out of jokes like two years ago, traders, just go with it. But welcome to the very first Indicator Profile Series video of 2023. Now we thought we would start you off with a indicator that I think is quite obscure, uh, mainly because it hasn't been around for a very long time uh, at all. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, if you're new, please enjoy the video. We do this all the time. Um, but Go to nononsenseforex.com if you really want to understand what we're doing here and watch the video on that first page. You will be well on your way. But for the rest of us, let's get right into the specs. Uh, the year here is 2022. Last year is <laughs> certainly the most modern indicator we have had in this series to date. Uh, now, the type is a confirmation indicator. It is also a zero cross, but I put that asterisk there because I don't know if that was the initial intent. I'm actually pretty sure it wasn't. Uh, we just kind of made it one, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. But as far as being an exit indicator, I wouldn't personally. You certainly can, but I don't think this would be the, the best way to go. So without further ado, let's take a look at it. Now, you can see down below here, um, it looks like it was intended to be a color change. I don't know the exact um, reasoning why it does what it does. Um, I think Dan has a little more insight to this on the blog. Uh, and you can certainly smooth this out by changing the settings. But right now, this looks like an absolute nightmare. We'll actually zoom in a little bit on it. You know, imagine entering or exiting a trade every single time these colors changed. You'd go crazy. So even in its best form as a color change indicator, we didn't really like it a whole lot, so what we did, and by we I mean primarily Dan, is just made it ours. You know, we turned it into a zero cross indicator and said, okay, let's see what this does. And just kind of played with it and tested it from there. So a zero cross indicator will go like this, if you don't already know. Once it crosses and closes above this zero line, that's a long signal. And conversely, when it goes below, and closes, you have a short signal. Again, always be careful. You have these instances right here, I hope you can see it, where it taps the zero line or the midline, depending on what you're doing. That is not a signal. If it touches it, it's not a signal. It has to go through. So that is not a signal. That is not a signal. Oddly enough, this is because you can, if you can see it, I hope you can, it barely went over that zero line. Uh, so it would have certainly been a loss, but I think we can reasonably say that other parts of your algorithm would have probably gotten rid of that loss. We never know this for sure, um, because I have no idea what those other pieces are for you. Um, but we can reasonably assume, you know, s trades like this or ones similar to it would be eliminated. Uh, but that's how we did it. Now, um, I think we've learned by now that you can take a lot of indicators that at first glance don't look like they would be usable to you and then change them into something that actually would. You know, we've been doing this for a while here on the channel. Um, so it just goes to show, if you see an indicator at first glance and you're like, ah, pretty useless, first ask yourself the question, can I turn this into something that would be useful? Um, I will release a little bit of a secret here. The main primary confirmation indicator I use for my Forex trading system is something I had to modify to the no-nonsense Forex way of trading. It originally wasn't built to be that way. I had to make it that way. And I'm very glad I did. And I'm sure a lot of you have done the same. And I think once you see the results for the smooth step indicator, uh, you will see firsthand that we might just be onto something here. So before we get into that, understand, do your own testing. Do not rely on the testing I show you at all. Even the indicators that test the absolute best on these videos may not play very well in your system, which means it's just not useful unless you decide to build another system around it. Uh, so take all of this with a grain of salt, but foreshadowing here, the grain of salt I'm about to give you is pretty darn tasty. Now also know that down below in the description, we're gonna give you uh, the link to my automation blog. 
that shows you how to test these yourself if you don't already know. You're going to get a link to Dan's blog, and uh, there's a decent level of tweaking here. You're going to want to know what to do, so you're probably going to want to go there, and then a place where you can download this yourself. Now, let's get on with it. First off, as always, is the Euro USD, and pretty nice. You know, like I said, if you can start there, that's a nice place to start with a decent win-loss ratio and a decent amount of total trades. Uh, but those were after the tweaks, and uh, you have to go to the blog to see what those tweaks are. You can find them to the right of these columns here. Moving on to where it gets really interesting, uh, as it has recently, and that's going to be in gold. Look at this. I mean, already on the daily, you have a really nice re return on your investment with a terrible win-loss ratio, <laughs> but I'll take this over this. And then down on the four hour, look at this, 30% return on investment on the four hour chart. And because the ROI is so close together here, you know, the tweaks didn't even really do a whole lot except for give you a different amount of total trades. So you can almost choose which one of these works out better for you and just roll with that. You know, it's nice to have those choices and yet still get the same crazy good result. Uh, but let's go ahead and move over to the S&P. Also really nice. Uh, this is some of the highest ROI we have had on the S&P to date with a really nice win-loss ratio. And again, you could almost just use the default if you wanted to because the trades are exactly the same. It's just so funny how this works out sometimes. Um, but let's go ahead and end it off with Bitcoin. And this is also great. Um, the only drawback, I think, is the amount of total trades. I mean, with that ROI, it's like, who cares? And remember too, if you're testing just simply 2022, you're getting a really good overview because you're getting a market that uh, makes big runs and also stagnates, which again, gun to my head, I think that's how it's gonna be for a while. So that's important. And this win-loss ratio is super high, but again, you're only going with 10 trades, so it's just seven out of 10. So I wouldn't give too much credence to that. You know, I would give more credence to this right here. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we will give you the obscure. We will give you the slightly more common. We're going to give it all to you this year. So subscribe and hit the bell. We have an investment podcast on this channel and a trading psychology podcast on this channel too. Don't miss anything. A lot of FUD this year for 2023. And uh, I'd be lying if I said I didn't agree with most of it. But as traders, it doesn't really affect us that much. We just put our heads down and go. And it is the best way to protect yourself against what could be a pretty rough year. So you know what you have to do. Put in that work, make it yours, and go get it.